and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DeTulio. And I'm Emily Clark. Over the years, Wayne Wilson has had success rotating his goaltenders while trying to find a winning combination. Now, during the 2008 season, Louis Menard and Jared DeMichael split time and combined for 23 victories while leading the Tigers to the AHA Tournament semifinals. However, last year's rotation of Josh Watson and Jordan Ruby fell well below expectations. Both goaltenders and the team for that matter struggled throughout the year, finishing below 500 for only the second time in eight seasons at the Division I level. Well, the offseason brought change to the position, and as Gene Vitagli discovered, for now the starting spot is a one-man show. No doubt, they've got a shot that quality. Oh, and there's a shot that is not quality, but it finds its way in. Sullivan. When we last saw the Tigers, it was a shared responsibility between Jordan Ruby and Josh Watson. Why is uh, what, what happened with Josh, and why is he no longer on the team? Well, uh, really, it kind of came down to a couple things. One, he was able to graduate in the summer, uh, and two, I think he wanted a. Uh, Jordan had taken over the number one role uh, down at the uh, at the stretch run for us last year, and, and we couldn't make any promises who's going to be number one. Uh, Jordan had taken over, and uh, you know it's it's competition every year uh, within your team, and then with others as you start playing league games. So uh, I think Josh just felt in his best interest that uh, to graduate early and and, and move on. Obviously, it was, a, it was a huge shock. Um, him and I were really good friends, buddies, uh, roommates, uh, right beside each other in the house where we lived at. Um, it, was a, it was a shock. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see it coming, and I guess it's nothing that you, I could see coming. At the hash marks, Porter, the quick shot. Ruby holds on for the save. You've uh, gone on record saying Jordan is your number one goalie entering this year. Tell me what is it that uh, you saw out of Jordan last year to enter this year uh, with that in mind? Uh, the fact that he started playing more games in a row, I think, gave him some traction to get better with each game. I think maybe a mistake uh, from a coaching perspective is that when you alternate goalies, it's hard to get traction and, and get your game on track. Whether you play a good game or a bad game, uh, you want to get in the next game. Uh, so if you have a good game, you want to build off that and, and continue playing. And if you have a tough game, you want to get back in. But whenever you have to wait, and in college hockey only playing two games a week, you've got to wait another week before you get back in. I, I think it might have hurt us on, on, in both cases with both goalies. Every game you were under the microscope, but last year it was even more. And, and it's, it's almost like whoever's going to make that little extra mistake was going to just you know, get canned for the first couple weekends and the other guy would start. And so every, you're a little tighter, you're, you're not as loose and relaxed. So it, and this year I felt like with that, um, it's more responsibility but more freedom. I'm just able to go in the game knowing that it's, it's fine, breathe, you have, you have time. You, and not see that knowing that you can make mistakes, you're gonna do it, but being aware of that, it, it does make you be more relaxed. And it makes you not, when you're in a game thinking about Am I going to play next weekend or not? Back the other direction. Big one-timer off the face mask of Ruby, and it's clear. Excellent. Look at Ruby coming up big. You proved last year that you, you can handle a load. I mean, you lose at Michigan, but you saved 44 in that game. You played your tail off in a one nothing loss to Niagara. Just some of the examples last year, you know, it, does that solidify in your mind that, okay, I, I, I belong at this level? Yeah, obviously, like with a year like last year, kind of going up and down, it was a year that you start, it's one of those thoughts, those bad thoughts can creep in, like, are you supposed to be here, are you not? And like, just keep working hard, keep, uh, keep the pedal to the metal, and just the, at the end of the season, the playoffs, um, getting those results, even though we lost, and still it doesn't sit well, but it was just able to, um, an, a positive affirmation for me, knowing that, you no, know, I, I did. I did work hard. I got to where I was supposed to that year, and it shows me that I am supposed to be here and I can play in this league. And that's near the end of the season last year in the playoffs. I, I, I felt like I was just seeing everything in the pucks were hitting me, and that mentality that when the season was done, I was I was really bummed because I, I felt like I just hit my stride.
Welcome back to Sports Zone. The Tigers returning 19 players from a year ago as the puck dropped on a brand new season. Jordan Ruby and the Tigers facing off against Colgate in the opener as RIT began its final season at Ritter Arena. First period, it was RIT who struck first. Tigers with a five on three advantage and senior Ben Lynch puts home the rebound to give RIT a one nothing lead. Picking up in the second, things unraveled for the Tigers. Greg Noyes with the giveaway, giving Mike Borkowski the easy goal to one Raiders. Just 42 seconds later, the Tigers Darcy Murphy centers to Andrew Black the Raiders would add another in the third as they skidded to a 4-1 victory over RIT. Two days later, the Tigers faced off against Michigan in front of a sold-out crowd at the Blue Cross Arena for Brick City homecoming weekend. It was a disastrous first period for RIT as the Wolverines overwhelmed the Tigers early. Phil D. Giuseppe with one of his two goals on the night. Michigan built a 4-0 lead after one. Second period, the Tigers came alive. On the power play, Mike Kolovecchia goes top shelf for the pretty goal. It was 4-1 after goals by Ben Lynch and Matt Garbowski. The Tigers were on the power play again, and Nolan Dakota gets the equalizer, tying the game at four. Under a minute to play in the period, Evan Allen fires it at the net, and it gets by Jordan Ruby to put the Wolverines up 5-4 after two. In the third, RIT thinks they tied it again, and Ben Lynch thinks he scored. However, it was determined that the puck hit the post but never crossed the line. Later in the period, Michigan put the game away as Tyler Mott scores. The Wolverines added an empty netter and escape with a 7-4 victory. With more, here's Sports Zone's Melissa Bromley. Despite being down 4 nothing at the end of the first, the RIT Tigers showed tremendous resilience, battling back in the second and tying the game at four. However, the number 11 Michigan Wolverines proved to be too much for the Tigers here at Blue Cross Arena. Lynch down low, back up top. Shumway flings it to the net, never got through. Lynch the blast, the black spot, and <laughs> We are tied! That Michigan lead has evaporated! Coming into the game, what were you expecting considering last year you guys were at Michigan's homecoming and this year having them with a chip on their shoulder? Well, they're a very intimidating roster to look at. Uh, knowing a lot of the recruits, they're, they're obviously uh, great players in their own right. I don't get too nervous before games, uh, maybe anxious or excited about games, but I was a little nervous before this one. Well, you know, we know they're a good team. They're up at the top of the rankings every year, and they bring in good recruits every year. So, I mean, we played them last year. We knew what they had, and they brought in some good guys this year, and we knew they were going to be a good team. We were excited to play them. We know Michigan's a, a great hockey team. Every year they uh, they make it to the tournament pretty much, and uh, they're a story franchise in NCAA hockey. So we were expecting uh, their best, and um, from our standpoint, we are looking to uh, to hold them off for a bit and then uh, you know take uh, take the pace to him here we go two on one quick shot and a goal and it's four to one can you talk about the first period and how it might have been a bit overwhelming for the team yeah it was not definitely not the start we wanted they're a good team and and I didn't think that we actually played that bad we made a few mistakes and they capitalized and that's what's going to happen when you play against a highly skilled team Normally, if you make five or six mistakes, you give up one or two goals. Tonight, five or six mistakes led to five or six goals. It was just a, a weird game that way. Uh, I was happy with the way we played in the first. was not obviously happy with the result, uh, but um, really proud with the way the guys played. And, the, and to bounce back like that was uh, significant, I thought. What did your goal do for the team in the second period and the overall game? Being down 4 nothing isn't easy, and uh, all the boys in the dressing room, we we're all looking for that first, uh, that first goal, try to open up the floodgates here, get, uh, get the goalie a little bit nervous. So we got stuck in our own end. I grabbed the puck down low, and I just saw ice in front of me, and I just started uh, moving forward with the puck. I saw a defenseman that uh, looked like he could be had. I took a chance on it, and uh, it worked out. Puts it in! Michael Polovecchia! That's some NHL style talent for you. Tigers are on the board, it's four to one. Even though the power play is over, the Tigers are applying some pressure here. Right out in front of the goal! And it's four to two! What was it like in the second period generating all those chances and getting back in the game? I was really proud of our guys, you know, the effort and everything. Uh, they battled back, we got one, and then the second one came, and then they just started coming, and uh, it was fun to be a part of. What was exciting? It was kind of like trying to break down a door. It's, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, and the excitement and all the fans and everything kind of snowballed into a, an event that was pretty exciting on the bench and exciting for the, the entire game. You scored the fourth goal tonight, the tying goal. What was going through your head? Quite honestly, uh, there's just noise. Um, 
the puck went in. I really couldn't tell you how it happened, to be completely honest with you. I know I hit it out of midair, um, and then the place erupted, and my mind just went blank. It was actually a, it was pretty cool. Um, would have been nice to have got it in a winning effort, but uh, it's definitely one of the better goals I've scored in my career for sure. Despite the loss tonight, you guys came back from a 4 nothing deficit. What does that say about the character of the team? Well, it's a big builder, and now it definitely raises the bar for us as a team, and we know that we can put pucks in the net, so we're going to hold ourselves to a higher standard and make sure that um, hopefully we can come out and limit our mistakes and, and uh, ensure that we don't get behind the eight ball, and then we can kind of propel ourselves forward from there. The RIT women's hockey team split a pair of games with Vermont during Brick City weekend. First period, RIT on the power play. Celeste Brown scores her second goal on the year to give RIT a 1 0 lead. The Tigers control play from start to finish. Courtney Kunachika scored twice, including this laser that found the back of the net. Allie Bennington stopping 33 shots between the pipes. RIT shuts out Vermont 6 0 in game one before losing game two 5 2. Well, there's still more ahead on this edition of Sports Zone. Later, we'll take you on the mighty Genesee to meet the most vital part of RIT's crew team. You're watching RIT Sports Zone in high definition. Welcome back to Sports Zone. The RIT men's hockey team returned eight of its top 10 scores this season. Included in that mix is the lineup of Brad McGowan, Mac Arbowski, and Dan Schuler. The Tigers leaned heavily on this group last year, and as Gene Battaglia reports, if RIT plans to get back to the top of the conference, they'll need their top line to produce even more this season. Tigers again, Garbowski out in front, another goal, McGowan left all alone, and Barnes is fuming. What is it, do you think, that uh, makes your line so successful? I think it's hard work with us. We like to, we don't really play the fanciest game. We get the puck down low, we try and outwork the other team, get it to the net, and hopefully have a bank in off one of us and get a goal. <laughs> Garbowski finding McGowan, walking in, McGowan, oh, and Schuler puts it in! How long did it take for you to get acclimated here, Dan, being the young guy on this line? It's probably about half the year, I guess, so I finally ended up with them. And, um, I don't know, I guess we kind of clicked a couple games after that. We have pretty good chemistry. Yeah. They're easy to play with. <laughs> you, you were 11, 6, and 3 when Brad had a point and when Dan had a point, 9, 3, and 1. It's not an accident. It, it certainly is something that if you guys are producing, that's going to lead to great things. Do you feel any more pressure? Uh, not really, no. I think we're just going to go about our jobs and play it out. I know everyone, this whole line brings intensity to the game, and we just look forward to playing. Shot! Yeah, yeah, yeah! You, you might have snuck up on people last year. Do you fully anticipate like this year now when teams are game planning against the Tigers that, you know, that you're going to see a lot of the top defensive pairings uh, against your line? Yeah, I think we definitely like that though. We like to play against the top guys on other teams. We wanna, we're not always so worried about scoring goals. We like to shut the other top line down in the other team and then go to work ourselves after that. I like the pressure. I wanna be the top guy. I wanna be the one if we're down a goal, goes out there. If we're up a goal, goes out there to stop the other team. I like that. It makes you feel better about yourself. It makes you work harder on and off the ice. I think every game we put a lot of pressure on any deep pair that we were up against. And um, we're one year older, one year better, hopefully. Uh, I don't see why we shouldn't be able to improve on that. Yeah. Yeah, because any time we get stuck over there, if we can bring it over here, he can always one time here. Okay, or do exactly what you did. You start walking it down if you see him, Garbo. It's not too often there. you have a line like McGowan, Garbowski, and Schuler. It's coming back. What's the potential for this line? Well, I think uh, we have a lot of potential, uh, that line in particular. Uh, when you look at them last year, two sophomores and a freshman, I thought they were one of the more dominant lines in our league and a line that we felt uh, could play uh, against anyone. Uh, so uh, now that they're a year older, uh, and I think as they uh, accept and uh, more responsibility and uh, I, I think continue to grow, I think it can only be better. Uh, and I like what we have coming up behind them. And B because Garbowski going in as a goal. Matt Garbowski.
Gretzky with the goal, and the Tigers lead two to nothing. What's got to happen, do you think, uh, for this team to get back uh, to the tournament? I don't think you can really just say one thing, but you know, the team just really has to come together and work as a team. I think is the big thing, like getting the freshmen in right away, you know, getting them acclimated with the game. Um, seniors, juniors, leading by example, and you know, just trying to get chemistry through the lines, the defense, get a hot goalie. I mean, there's a number of things that have to come together, and I think we do have the team that can put it together, and we're excited to start the year. Shot by McGowan gets blocked, rebound right out in front. Oh, what great work by the Tigers! Two-one RIT. Oh, you gotta love RIT. Unfortunately, through two games this season, RIT's top line hasn't taken the ice together. Winger Dan Schuler is being held out with an eye injury, and there's no word on when he'll return to the lineup. Anyone who follows rowing understands how vital the coxswain is to the success of the entire team. As Lauren McChain discovered, the leader out of the water is so much more than just a cheerleader. So, let's see you build it here in two, over five strokes. This is one. How long have you been involved in crew? I've coxed for eight years. Uh, I coxed for four years in high school on our women's team and then I went to Boston University for a year, I got recruited to their women's team, uh, had a good time with the team, but then decided that it was a little bit too intense for me, decided that BU wasn't the right place for me, transferred to RIT, and the men's team needed a coxswain, and I figured, why not, let's try something new. What is the role of a coxswain? The coxswain is sort of like the mini coach on the water. Like, the coxswain's responsibility is to steer the boat, make sure it goes straighter, it stays on the course, uh, to sort of run practice, run drills, make sure everybody is doing technique correctly while they're rowing, and uh, make them want to row harder, because no one's going to do something for you if they don't want to. Push, squeeze, that's how you're coming out, Bruno. How do you prepare for a race? I look at the race course and see if there are any big important turns. Like, Head of the Charles is in two weeks, and that's one of the biggest and most difficult courses that a coxswain can steer because it's like bendy, there are a couple 90 degree turns, it's a huge 180 degree turn, and that's not that easy to do. Three and a half, you were at 22 before, I need you at this mid-20s rate. The training is more on the mental level rather than the physical level because we're the brains of the boat, basically, because the rowers are facing backwards and they have no idea where they're going. So part of the training of the coxswain is to keep your wits about you at all times, know practice, know how many meters in you are, know where the other boats are on the course. So we have to do all the thinking for them. So it's all more the mental side rather than physical things. There's that set. All right, let's take a five to build in two. This is one push. How does climate and time of day affect your performance? Um, I'm going to say that for the first 20 minutes of practice, it's very dark and very cold. And I'm not awake yet because it's 5.30 in the morning. So I'm sort of on autopilot. I've been doing it for long enough that I sort of know the calls to make. I know where I am on the river and I know how not to crash into anything and sort of keep everything going without actually having to like really think about it. Do you feel like your role is overlooked by people who don't know a lot about crew? When I tell people I'm a coxswain, most of the time they're confused, and then I tell them that I'm the little person in the back that screams row, and then they sort of know what I'm talking about from like TV and other stuff like that. But up. then I tell them further okay, that I have a little microphone, and I tell the Look guys what to do, and then they say, the guys, well, you're on the men's team? And I say, yeah, because it's not really a special thing in the coxing world to be a female coxswain on the men's team, because typically women weigh lighter than men do, so in theory, the boat will go faster with a lighter coxswain. On the collegiate level and in high school, it's not uncommon to see a female coxswain in a men's boat. And sometimes you'll even see male coxswains in girls' boats, but that's a less common thing. Do you feel like you're helping to break that stereotype that coxswains are only cheerleaders for the team? I hope to do that. I mean, I don't want to be just a little person in the back that screams row. Uh, without me, they wouldn't know where they were. They wouldn't have motivation. Without them, I wouldn't be able to go and I wouldn't be able to have a team to motivate. So it's sort of a like a yin and yang type thing. And I want to let people know that I'm not always angry all the time. Like if you look at me in the boat, I'm pretty like 
like I've always got the furrow on and I'm just screaming at people, but off the water, we're still a team and it doesn't matter that I'm the cots and I'm just a teammate. 10 minutes, 10. Well, don't forget that staying connected to RIT Sports Zone is now easier than ever thanks to the RIT Sports Zone app. You can access highlights, features, and so much more. So download the RIT Sports Zone app for your Android or Apple device today. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone.